Good afternoon, everyone. In today's webinar, we are going to talk about applicability of GeoPure Foundation systems for transportation structures. We will briefly discuss about design considerations, performance criteria, and brief overview of GeoPure technologies. Following topics will be discussed in next 55 minutes of the presentation. We'll, we'll talk about types of transportation structures, traditional foundation options to support these transportation structures, advantages of ground improvement systems, GeoPure methodology to design adequate foundation system for the, for the transportation structures, design approach for stabilization of slopes, embankments, and MSC and casting place walls. At the end, I will provide case history for ground improvement or GeoPure supported embankments and GeoPure supported MSC wall. There are different modes of transportation. There, today we are going to focus on embankments, existing slopes, MSC walls, and casting place walls and bridges. All of the above structures are founded, founded on soils. And if these soils are weak, compressible, we do have issues with the design criteria for this project for the projects these structures often exert heavy loads on foundation soils so how design is implemented if some foundation soils are problematic what are the factors that goes into consideration of the design of the foundation system for bridges msc wall embankments slope we need to consider if the slope is flatter or steeper is right of way for the embankment slope is adequate what is the wall height and geometry of the wall uh, is is soils in front of the wall we need to consider the sloping pattern the backfill is level behind the wall or is it or is it a sloping backfill how tall is the wall and the embankments? Nowadays, we often see embankments as tall as 30 to 40 feet, and MSC walls are also 30 to 50 feet in height. These walls and embankments apply or exert heavy pressures somewhere around 4,000 to 6,000 PSF on the foundation soils. Also, the structure or the footprint areas of these structures is way too large. And what it means is the influence factor goes to deeper depth. Generally, if the, for example, if you have 5,000 PSF load applied on the, on the foundation soils, even at 30 feet, your influence factor is about 0.3 0.9 to 0.95, which means for that 5,000 PSF, delta P at 30 to 40 feet is about 4,500 PSF. So what happens if you have a soft compressible layer, or let's say a thin organic layer around 30 to 40 feet in your soil profile? This compressible layer is going to induce a lot of settlement, and your total settlement going to be very high. We also need to consider the shallow groundwater conditions. How about the, the seismic loads induced, induced due to the earthquake loading, uh, especially in the California area, Tennessee or Savannah, Georgia. We also need to think about the adjacent construction and last not the least, duration of the construction. Uh, to meet the milestone date, uh, all the weather delays and all the buffer consider considering the, the completion date of the project, we need to be very careful in selecting a proper foundation system for, to support these structures. When we design these structures, we have to perform engineering analysis to 
make sure adequate factor of safety is, is obtained against global instability. Total and differential settlements is another important criteria in designing these structures. Also the bearing capacity. The foundation soils need to be competent to take 5,000 PSF or even higher pressure acting on these soils. The overturning moment, sliding resistance of the wall, and also the internal, internal stability of the MSE wall need to be considered. The ground improvement system, we design embankment walls or MSE walls, cast in place walls to ensure we have adequate factor of safety. We meet the criteria for the total and differential settlement and the ring capacity is achieved. GeoPure Foundation Company is the first company who received uh, approval on the design methodology from HITECH. HITECH is a Highway Innovative Technology Evaluation Committee and they approved GeoPure's design methodology in 2007. The primary design factors are bearing capacity, global stability, and settlement. So when we talk about the bearing capacity, what, what happens to the ground or the metric soil due to the installation of the, of the ground improvement system? Ground improvement systems basically drill out the weak compressible soils or undocumented fill and replace with compacted stone of aggregate. By, by achieving so, by ramming the stone in compacted thin leaf, we are inducing lateral stresses in the metric soil, which, which enhances the stiffness of the metric soil and in turn, increases the bearing capacity of the soil. We can achieve almost 5,000 to 10,000 PSF of bearing capacity if we install the ground improvement system like RAP, which is RAM aggregate piers. So what is ground improvement an option to support these structures? If yes, what are the benefits of ground improvement system over traditional foundation options. What is the design methodology and what goes in the design of the ground improvement system? Under what circumstances one need to consider if this project can be designed using ground improvement system? In next, next session, we're going to learn about stability analysis, increasing the composite shear strength parameter values and how one can design the ground improvement system to, to provide a su adequate solution for to support the transportation structures. Slope stability. What are the driving forces? Why slopes are unstable? The slopes are unstable because of the external loads like traffic surcharge or parking lots uh, present adjacent to the slope. Sometimes seepage forces uh, generated due to the head difference in the water can induce several straight, uh, can, can induce the driving forces causing the slopes to be unstable. Also the over, overburden soils in the, inside the critical surface acts up to the driving forces. And what resists these driving forces of the soil? It's the shear strength of the soil acting along the critical surface resist these driving forces. What you see on the screen is a typical MSC wall uh, picture. You see MSC block, you have retain zone and you have wall backfill. So if MSC wall is constructed over the soft foundation soil, there is the slopes or the global stability analysis indicates for this case, it's, it's unstable. Uh, the factor of safety is are much lower than the required factor of safety. So when the foundation soils are weak, compressible, compressible or you have uh, undocumented fill, what do industry do to 
resolve these problematic soils or to take care of so that the design criteria is met. The typical practice is to, if the, if the near surface soils on the order of three to 10 feet uh, are compressible, weak, saturated, or there is undocumented fill or contaminated soil, the, the general practice is to remove these soils and replace with structural fill in compacted lift. Uh, if we excavate to remove the soils, we need temporary shoring, so which adds cost and significant effort to install or erect the shoring system. If there is a shallow groundwater, we need to we need to have the dewatering techniques to dewater the area. Scheduling is is weather dependent. Too many rainy days can uh, can delay the project schedule. We can easily miss the milestone date. Also, the over excavation depths. Some of the soils are moisture sensitive, and depth of over excavation varies. Compaction required. How about the bearing pressures? This these structures, as discussed before, apply a heavy load on the foundation soil. So we need to ensure that foundation soils are capable of taking this load. And last, which is the most important factor in any design, is how much it's going to cost. So can we, can we, if if we cannot do all this thing, if our expensive, the typical other expensive system is deep foundation systems. Instead of over excavation, transferring the loads to deeper elements. Deep foundations are edge piles, which are steel elements, uh, concrete piles. These are very expensive elements. What other option we have? What you see is number three is an intermediate foundation system, which is the ground improvement system. So you are densifying the soil by improving the mechanical properties of the ground. And by doing so, you can basically design the leveling pad of the MSC wall, or you can support embankment on the on a uniform reinforced crust, which is generated due to the installation of the GOPR or the ground improvement element. It also minimizes the differential settlement along the length of the project. These GOPR elements, they are high stiffness metrics, so they attract more stresses. Also, being made of gravel, they increase the consolidation in the metric soils, especially if the soil consists of clay. GOPR elements can increase the rate of settlement by radial drainage. They, they provide high bearing capacity because of the significant increase in the mechanical property of the soil and speed of construction. Geopier is it's a, made of gravels, so weather delays does not cause any significant uh, project delay schedule in the project delays. Nowadays, this number three option has really become a number one preferable option for a lot of design build as well as design build build projects. What you see in the in, on the screen is these are our typical uh, widely used techniques. We have many more uh, techniques we use in the ground improvement, and it varies depending upon the. The, the size of the project, the design criteria of the project, and most importantly, the, the soil stratigraphy. What you see on the extreme right is the GP3, which we also call as drill and fill technique. We use this technique where holes can stay open, and generally the depth of the GOPR element is up to 30 feet. We uh, the next most widely used system is impact system, what you see in the uh, center of the screen here, which is uh, where holes cannot stay open, or let's say you have contaminated soils or uh, shallow groundwater conditions. We use the impact technique, which is nothing but 
a hollow mandrel is driven to the design depth and aggregates are fed from the top. There are chains attached to the head at, at the bottom of the mandrel, which binds together to form a, com a compactive, compacting surface to compact the aggregate in lips. There, there is another technology, what we call X1 technology, which is a prefabricated edge beam, which is the hybrid technique technology in between GP3 and impact. We also have GCC, which is geoconcrete element, what you see on the extreme left. So if you have soft compressible layers or deeper depth pit layers, we use geoconcrete columns to support the foundations. We have another tool, which is armor packed element. So if you have organic or peak layer in upper 10 to 15 feet, we can use armor packed shells to support the foundations. This is a snapshot of few of our most widely used techniques. On left hand side, you see GP3. Center picture is impact system where you see a, a, a hollow mandrel and a hopper attached to the top of the mandrel. And extreme right is your X1 system, which is an edge beam. GP3. What you see here on the picture extreme right is the is the tamper foot, which is a bevel shape tamping foot which is used in GP3 technology to ram aggregate into the cavity. A typical equipment uh, needed to install GeoPier system, you need a GeoPier drill, you need skid skir steer and GeoPier tamper. Generally, uh, a crew consists of four people and three machineries, uh, very rapid installations. We can install about 30 to 50 peers a day. Very safe, clean, and dry process. And there is no setup time, no weather delays. Most of the, oftentimes, once the geo peers are installed, contractor, concrete contractor, or grading contractor follows us right behind us to, 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 to perform the rest of the activities. I'm going to play a video for you to understand the installation of the GP3 system. Geopier elements are constructed by drilling out a volume of soft soil to create a cavity and then ramming aggregate into the cavity in thin lips. A bottom bulb is constructed using open graded stone and then well graded stone is used in thin lip to construct the geopure element. As this bevel shaped tamping foot is, is applying the ramming efforts on the aggregate, it's laterally pushing the soils outward inducing the lateral stresses in the metric soils. This is our impact system. Uh, the reach for this impact is about 45 feet. So we can construct geopier elements uh, approximately 45 feet long. It's very dry process, no spoils are generated. So very good technique for contaminated sites rapid installation, we can install about 40 to 100 peers per day. What if when you install a peer and this peer is excavated, how does it look like? What you see is a very densely packed column of aggregate. Even if you clearly look at the picture, you see some undulated shapes which are showing when the aggregates are ramming into the cavity, they are pushing the soil metrics outward and which is creating the bulbs of aggregate. So every two feet or so, you see an undulated shape of this pier. These pier aggregates uh, are densely packed, 
and due to the dilation, the particles roll over each other to, to get a very densely packed material and very high friction angle. The friction angle of the, the geopure element is about 45 degrees to 50 degrees. Lot of uh, research, uh, including the laboratory testing on, on samples, as well as the field instrumentation has been performed in the past. And the, 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 this slide particularly shows the full scale top of peer direct shear test results and lab triaxial shear test results, which shows the friction angle of 48 degrees for open graded stones and 52 degrees for the well graded stone. What are the results of construction? So obviously increase in lateral pressure along the shaft length. There is no setup time and stiffness of these ram aggregate piers. Uh, they are about 10 to 40 times stiffer than the metric soil. Isn't that great? Now we're going to discuss more into sta stability of the slopes, what causes the instability and how ground improvements uh, solution or ground improvement system can provide a solution to improve the factor of safety for the embankments and the MSC wall. So we will first cover the embankment slopes, we'll cover a case history, and then we will move on to the MSC wall global stability analysis. So RAP uh, applicability, which is RAM aggregate peer, it increases the shear res shearing resistance of, of the metric soil. In general, we perform limit equilibrium analysis to analyze the slopes. Some engineers also perform numerical and numerical methods such as FEA to, to analyze the slopes. In this session, we're going to focus only on the limit equilibrium theory. There are several softwares available in the industry such as G-Stable, Slope W, Slide by Rock, to, to perform the stability analysis. We use modified Bishop Spencer method, Morganton price to evaluate or to find out the factor of safety against the global instability. What happens, why slope is stable, uh, unstable? When the driving forces, what you see in the screen, and we mentioned the factors, we, we mentioned in previous slides, the factors causing the driving forces. When the driving forces overcome the resisting forces, the slope is unstable. For an example, the blue color is the native subgrade. It's a soft clay. Let's say the undrained shear strength of the clay is about 750 PSF and an embankment is constructed which is 20 feet tall over the foundation soils which are marginal in strength. If we perform the slope stability analysis, we, the factor of safety is about less than one. Most of the time, the DOTs, they, they need or the design criteria for acceptable factor of safety is about 1.3 to 1.5 for long-term and short-term conditions. Uh, for rapid drawdown or seismic uh, conditions, the factor of safety of 1.1 is acceptable. So what you see here in this slide is the slope is unstable. What do we do? Can, can we use ground improvement system to stabilize the slope? What are the other options available on table and, and what is the cost of construction or the, the, the cost per option selected to make this slope stable? Yes, the option is we can make this slope flatter, we can reduce the height of the embankment, but what if we keep the same design but install ground improvement elements in the ground to increase the shearing resistance of the foundation soils? 
So installation of the wraps, it will improve the mechanical properties of the soil, enhances the shear strength of the soil. So what you see on the screen, the blue green green block is a composite zone or a wrap zone, ram, ram aggregate pier zone. It is the, the weak soil is removed and replaced with aggregate by about 15%, 20%. So that became a composite composite block with the composite strength parameters. So you have geopier strength of the geopier element and you have strength shear strength of the metric soil. And this, this block is need to be designed so we can increase the factor of safety against the global instability. What you see on the screen is just a GOPR elements. They are installed in four rows. And how do we calculate the composite shear strength parameters? RA is simply wrap percent area coverage, which means how much volume of soil being removed and replaced with compacted aggregate GOPR column. So, 20% means 20% of the soil is removed and replaced with aggregate gravel. CCOM, which is the composite cohesion, is simply calculated as the addition of composite cohesion of geopure element times RA and one minus RA times cohesion of the metric soil. Similarly, we can co calculate the PCOM value. For an example, RA of 20%, which is 0.2, metric soil cohesion of 500 PSF, metric soil phi angle, internal friction of zero degrees, and phi G, which is geopier friction angle of 45 degrees, we get C composite of 400 PSF and phi composite of 11.3 degrees. So if you see the metric soil, which has undrained shear strength of 500 PSF and friction angle of zero by installing ground improvement system, we, our C composite parameter is 400 PSF and phi comp is 11.3 degrees, say 11 degrees, substantial increase in the friction angle. What are we missing? Here. Yes, we did calculate the composite shear strength parameter values, but are we missing anything? Yes, indeed. Uh, the stress concentration, geopure elements, they are stiffer, so they attract more stresses. And being stiffer element, we need to consider the stress concentration in the composite in composite shear strength parameter values. So when we consider the stress concentration, which are typically varies, varies from one to five for flexible structures, we can get higher CCOM and FECOM depending upon the value of the stress concentration. Please note that uh, the composite parameters are sensitive to the RS factor or stress concentration. So caution need to be applied while considering a appropriate value of the RS. When in doubt, it's always a good practice. It's rather conservative approach to use RS of one. Let's take an example. For RA of 0 0.2, 20%, RS, which is stress concentration of three, undrained shear strength 500, and P of zero, metric soil, Let's see in the table, no wrap, the values are 500 and zero friction angle. Wrap, which is the ground improvement geopure element, no stress concentration or stress concentration of one, 
we have cohesion of 400 and phi of 11 degrees. If we use stress concentration of three, the values are 286 and phi value of 22 degrees. Take a look at it, column number two, no wrap, and column number four, wrap with concentration. The phi value, significant difference, zero degrees to 22 degrees. That's how the shear strength has increased due to the installation of the ground improvement elements. So we just learned about how do we increase the factor of safety of the same embankment by installing the geopier elements, which increases the shear strength of the metric soils. So what we see in past four or five slides is factor of safety has increased from one to 1.5. What are the advantages of ground improvement system in stabilizing the embankments and slope? Yes, we get very high friction angle, the increase in composite shear resistance and increases the global stability and slope stability. Let's talk about a case history on a project where GeoPeer system was installed in 2004. The project is located in uh, just north of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's a US 71 slope stabilization. What you see is a massive disaster of the embankment fill, which was placed to, to expand the US 71 roadway. The, it, it was located close to the Bayou des Glaciers. And we were called after the, the failure has occurred to provide, uh, to basically identify the root cause of the problem, why the failure occurred. And can we, can we recommend some ground improvement solution for the sustainability of the roadway? And we looked at this project, we designed the work and let's Let's go over the design and the construction work performed on this project. The picture shows the longitudinal cracking along the roadway before the failure occurred. These are the toe scarps after the failure. Showing the picture of the instability along the embankment slope. Uh, what you see is the Bayou at the top of the this picture. So we we performed series of borings. Also, the inclinometers were installed to capture any ongoing movement. B1 was boring. B1 was performed at the top of the crest, and boring B2 was performed at the at the toe, about five feet of. Uh, fill was placed at the toe and about 15 feet of uh, embankment fill was placed, uh, grade raise fill was placed over the, the foundation soils, uh, which, are, which are relatively or marginally uh, marginal shear strength. Inclinometer studies monitoring indicated the, the movement along the crest as well as the the downslope, which is the toe side of the, the slope. We perform stability analysis uh, using, the, use, using a factor of safety of one and back calculating the metric soil parameter values. Also, both samples were retrieved in the lab to perform the additional lab testing. We designed a geopure system or a block using the composite approach, what we discussed uh, five minutes ago, and we obtained a factor of safety of 1.3. So this is a, a plan view of the RAP zone, which is RAM aggregate peer zone 
installed somewhere in the mid height of the slope. The bottom line is where the toe of the slope, you see US 71 alignment and the geopier zone. Small circles, what you see in this wrap zone are individual geopier elements. The space was uh, very tight on this project. Uh, this is this is the slope stability analysis showing the cross section of the geopier elements uh, that block uh, we use composite parameter values to obtain factor of safety adequate for the design. This is the construction photos showing the bull rock a uh, lot of equipment ongoing busy construction activity. Uh, we use bull rock at the bottom of the pier zone and you see different types of aggregate stockpile of the site. Another look of the, the project site before installation. And this is the post reinforcement inclinometer monitoring result showed really very minimal or no movement. Uh, no movement after three months and till date, no movement, everything is good. So clearly shows how effective ground improvement system is for stabilizing the embankments or any any projects uh, where there is a high risk or there are any signs of the slope instability, we can take a look at it and design a solution for that. Overall, we installed 340 geopier elements. The shaft length for elements, uh, design shaft length was 20 feet. Reinforced the slope and stabilized the ongoing movement. And inclinometer show no long-term movement of the rainfall zone. Let's move on to MSC wall design, which are very common commonly designed walls we see on several DOTs they prefer MSC walls and the height of these walls vary anywhere from 10 feet to 40 feet. Um, cast in place concrete walls are also designed but mostly we see those on the on the private development side. Uh, what are the design criteria for this and what ground improvement can help in, in designing uh, to meet the project criteria for these walls. The ground improvement system can provide very high bearing capacity, anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 PSF, improves the global stability by increasing the composite shear strength parameter value, and reduces the embankment settlement. So if you have undocumented fill or variable thickness of uh, fill under the MSC wall, GOPR system can help facilitate to reduce or limit the differential settlement of the system. The, on the left hand side, you see MSC wall with uh, straps and casting place wall, the bearing pressure distribution. MSC wall or retaining wall design, you install wrap elements to satisfy the bearing capacity needs. Picture showing the installation of the wrap elements and casting place. How do we estimate? We talked about bearing capacity. We also um, learn more about the stability analysis. Uh, how did we increase the composite shear strength parameter values or shear strength of the soil? Uh, let's talk about the settlement approach. Uh, how do we how do we estimate the settlement of these uh, transportation structures? We 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 typically perform two layer approach to estimate the settlement, the upper layer and the lower layer or lower zone. So lower zone is the zone below the tip of the GOPR element. For the upper layer, upper zone settlement, we can one can use Hooke's law to estimate the settlement, which is simply 
uh, a multiplication of QI times H uh, divided by ECOM. Q is your applied pressure from the wall or embankment. I is your influence factor. H is the height of the reinforced zone. And ECOM is nothing but composite stiffness in reinforced zone. How do we estimate the ECOM value? Let's learn about that. Composite stiffness using weighted average is nothing but the stiffness of the metric soil and uh, or the elastic modulus of the metric soil and the elastic modulus of GOPR element. RA is your replacement, area replacement ratio, which means how much soil has been removed and removed and replaced with gravel. Also, one of the important advantages of GeoPure system is it increases the rate of settlement. It, when the metric soil, it helps or facilitate the consolidation settlement, expediting the consolidation settlement of the metric soil uh, by radial drainage, thereby increasing or reducing the overall uh, time of the settlement. Settlement of, occurs in weeks and not months. That is a significant uh, cost saving on the transportation projects. Picture shows the layout of GeoPier under MSC wall. So tighter spacing GeoPier elements were designed in grid pattern under the MSC wall. And if you see the middle portion of this layout, the piers are widely spaced. Uh, so under the embankments, peer, uh, piers are widely spaced. And it all depends on the design criteria. The MSC walls, uh, generally some of the panels for the MSC wall, they are sensitive. And depending on the, the construction and the stage approach taken by the design team, uh, and, and the design criteria, we design the spacing of the GeoPure elements. Let's uh, take a look at the project we done in Memphis. Uh, anybody living in Memphis, Tennessee uh, must be familiar with this interchange I-40, I-240. So we did uh, installation um, on the same project in 2003 and 2013. We supported 11 MSC walls uh, and the height, height of these walls uh, varied. Max wall height was 25 feet and the maximum pressure uh, was 5,000 PSF. The, the project was constructed in phases and sections. What were the soil conditions? Typically, Memphis uh, profile sensitive silts, lean clays, soft, uh, about under and shear strength of 750 PSM in upper 30 feet, uh, followed by medium dense to dense, poorly graded sand, clay sand. Bearing capacity was performed, engineering analysis was performed to, to ensure adequate factor of safeties are achieved uh, using lower bound bearing capacity approach. Stability was performed uh, using the GOPR system. So MSC wall, what you see on the screen is uh, light blue. And then you see purple, uh, colors wrap one and wrap two, which is nothing but the, the composite parameter values uh, after designing the GeoPure system. Bearing capacity factor of safety of 2.5 or greater was achieved. Uh, global stability factor of safety was greater than 1.5. So we saved significant cost on the project by installing 15 foot long geopure elements. And 
it was an alternative to undercutting and backfilling in congested urban area where the right of way space or the extent uh, of the construction was limited. Nice picture of uh, of the I-4240 interchange showing MSC walls. Bottom lower portion showing the construction of the wall. And very nice aerial photograph showing the interchange. Another project example, we have, uh, this is the project we completed in Missouri City, Texas. Uh, we support a 31 foot tall MSC wall in Siena Parkway. GOPR wrap elements were installed seven foot on center and approximately 490 GOPR elements were installed in less than three weeks. So please note the speed or the duration of the GOPR construction. Once we start the activity, install about 50 to 100 elements a day, we, we are in and out in three weeks. That is, that is a, a very remarkable achievement. Another example is 37 foot tall MSC wall we supported for the Picardy Avenue. Uh, soft and stiff soils were were present as the foundation soils and in lieu of uh, significant depths of undercutting, we, we installed GOPR elements at uh, 5.25 to 8 foot on center and the, the difference between the on center spacing is the height of the wall as uh, the pressure of the wall varies and the settlement and the soil profile. Uh, we perform work on this project in multiple phases. With that, I thank you very much for everyone for listening to this presentation.